Johnson County 911. Oh Today, our lives are heavily intertwined with social media. And yet, we refuse to understand the consequences of our virtual actions. The case of Janelle Potter is a tragic reminder of how online feuds can spiral out of control, leading to devastating real-world consequences. This outrageous case involves the CIA, catfishing, and a sheltered girl who was still monitored by her parents in her 30s. But the same case left two people dead and a baby struggling to cope with the loss for the rest of his life. This is the tragic story of Janelle Porter. Janelle Potter was born in 1982 and grew up just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Her childhood was far from normal. Everyone who knew her remembers her parents monitored her every message and interaction well into her 30s. It was the same words over and over again, extreme overprotection and isolation, that would have lifelong effects on her social development and ability to navigate the world around her. Her room is filled with stuffed animals that stand in as friends. She doesn't work, doesn't drive, and she confides in us she's never been with a man. Janelle's parents, Barbara and Marvin, Buddy Potter, were shockingly protective of their daughter. While it's natural for parents to want to shield their children from harm, the Potters took this instinct to an extreme. What were the rules? Don't be out past, you know, 12 o'clock at night. No smoking, no drinking, no partying, and stuff like that. As Janelle grew older, these restrictions didn't ease. If anything, they intensified. Unlike her older sister, Christy, who was allowed more freedom, Janelle was kept on an incredibly short leash. She wasn't allowed to go out with friends, to stay up late, or to even learn how to drive when she became old enough. The reasons behind this overprotection were complex. Janelle had several health issues, including type 1 diabetes, partial deafness, and learning difficulties. She also struggled with social interactions, often unable to pick up on normal social cues or understand when others were joking or being sarcastic. These challenges led to frequent misunderstandings and arguments with her peers. In her parents' eyes, she was someone who needed a lot of help. Good-natured, sweet person. She's not an angry person. Naive, young, innocent? Yes, very naive. She's young in her mind, more young than her age, I think. Instead of learning to stand up for herself or handle conflicts, Janelle became increasingly dependent on her parents to manage her life and her interactions with others. This overprotection extended to Janelle's school life as well. Whenever the slightest issue arose at school, her parents would immediately intervene, often in an aggressive manner. They never allowed Janelle to face consequences for her actions or learn to resolve conflicts on her own. This taught Janelle that she could treat others however she wanted without repercussions, as her parents would always swoop in to defend her, regardless of her behavior. Perhaps most troublingly, Janelle developed a habit of lying to gain attention and sympathy. She would often make up stories about her life, fake illnesses, or even claim to have serious conditions like cancer. And shockingly enough, these lies went largely unchallenged by her parents, who seemed to believe everything Janelle told them. This pattern of deception and lack of accountability would have severe consequences later in Janelle's life. The family dynamic was further complicated by the stark difference in how Janelle and her older sister, Christy, were treated. While Janelle was coddled and protected, Christy was often blamed for family conflicts and seen as the bad egg. This led to significant tension between the sisters, with Christy eventually becoming estranged from the family after she moved out. After graduating high school, Janelle's isolation only intensified. Her parents discouraged her from seeking employment, convinced that she lacked the necessary social skills to hold a job. Instead, they encouraged her to live at home indefinitely, essentially cutting her off from the experiences and interactions that most young adults use to build their independence and social abilities. In 2005, when Janelle was in her early 20s, the Potter family moved to the small town of Mountain City, Tennessee. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's related by blood or marriage to everybody else. They all go to the same churches. This relocation further isolated Janelle, removing her from any familiar surroundings or potential friendships she might have formed in Pennsylvania. In Mountain City, a tight-knit community of about 2,500 people, the Potters stood out as outsiders, making it even more difficult for Janelle to form connections. Sign welcoming people to 
Mountain City says uh, a friendly hometown. Friendly to you? Uh, no. Why not? Because I wasn't born and raised here. With limited real world social interactions, Janelle turned to the internet and used social media as her primary means of communicating and relationship building. I have a lot of family pictures on there, random pictures of sceneries, dogs. Selfies? Any selfies? Self. Did your parents have access to your Facebook page? Did they monitor it? Yes. yes. This shift would set the stage for an unimaginable tragedy. As Janelle settled into life in Mountain City, she found herself more isolated than ever. Unable to drive, work, or socialize freely, social media was her only window to the world. Platforms like MySpace and the newly popular Facebook became Janelle's lifeline, offering her a way to connect with others that she had never experienced before. Online, Janelle could present herself however she wanted. She created profiles that depicted a rich social life filled with friends and activities that were far from her reality. She even invented a fake boyfriend, tagging random men in her photos to create the illusion of a romantic relationship. This online persona allowed Janelle to escape the limitations of her sheltered life, at least virtually. Her parents saw this, of course, and they were monitoring her every post, but they didn't seem to mind. Despite these restrictions, Janelle's life took an unexpected turn when she met Tracy Greenwell, a kind-hearted pharmacy employee. We felt sorry for Janelle. She was sheltered and sick and stuff. She gave me her phone number and I started calling her. I would go out with her to um, the mall. Uh, to her house and out to eat. Tracy felt sorry for Janelle. Still, pity turned into real friendship, and for Janelle, it was a life-changing experience. From talking to someone who isn't family to facing her fear of heights through rock climbing, every single week was a new milestone in Janelle's life. Through Tracy, Janelle met Tracy's brother, Billy Payne, a jovial outdoorsman who would later become a central figure in this tragic story. Did you ever get the impression that maybe she liked Billy? That's what the, everybody says. She fell in love with Bill, but I didn't. I still don't say it like that. Indeed, there would be nothing between these two. Instead, Janelle became a thing with Tracy's cousin, Jamie Curd, and it was well orchestrated by Tracy. Well, Jamie was sort of rough looking, you know, greasy. And she was neat. So why did you think this set up Jamie and Janelle? Hey, Jamie didn't have a girlfriend, and she really didn't have a boyfriend. I mean, they didn't look like they'd go together by no means. Jamie and Janelle's relationship was complicated from the start. They had to keep their romance a secret from Janelle's parents, who would not have approved. Jamie, who was good with computers, would visit the Potter home under the guise of fixing their PC allowing the couple to steal moments together. He even bought Janelle a secret cell phone so they could communicate without her parents' knowledge. You and Jamie got pretty serious at one point. Yes. He, uh, he gave you a cell phone so that you guys could talk without your parents being on the phone. Yes. But while Janelle was involved with Jamie, she harbored a secret crush on Billy Payne. This unrequited attraction would play a huge role in the tragedy that was about to happen. Billy, unaware of Janelle's feelings, began dating a woman, Billy Jean Hayworth. Yup, Billy and Billy. The couple soon became engaged and had a baby boy. And you guys can only imagine how Janelle felt about this. It was around this time that Janelle claimed she began experiencing cyberbullying. She reported receiving horrible, threatening messages on her Facebook page, messages that called her a bad person and even threatened her with SA. What kinds of things were people saying about you? Just that I was a bad person, I was horrible, threatened to get raped. I remember I wrote, please do not write on Janelle's Facebook. I beg them, please don't do this. Janelle pointed the finger at Billie Jean Hayworth, accusing her of being behind the attacks. Oh, she hated her. From the get-go. Mm -hmm. She'd call her all kinds of bad names. It soon became clear that the situation was far more complex than it initially appeared. Janelle was not an innocent victim. She was engaging in her own campaign of online harassment against Billy and Billie Jean. She posted vicious comments about the couple, even wishing death upon them and their infant son. That she wished that Bill and Billie Jean and that damn baby would die. Now, messages like these were the norm in the online space of Mountain City. Yeah, this online feud quickly escalated badly with both sides exchanging ever more cruel insults. She was always saying that somebody was mad at her, somebody hated her, somebody wanted to 
her. She was paranoid about it, I thought. And they're trying to set me up, but I don't like this because I'm very sick. Once, Janelle had called the police to report a rock bearing two names in her yard. According to her, this bizarre rock had been thrown at her dad's car as a part of the feud. After all, Bill and Billy's names were on it. And around the same time, these three would unfriend each other on Facebook. The tight-knit community of Mountain City thought, hey, at last, that's the end of it. But days later, an event would scar the same community and leave everyone in shock. Johnson County 911. On January 31st, 2012, Bill and Billie Jean's neighbor made a gruesome discovery. Their home's back door was wide open, so she walked in, fearing a violent robbery. Instead, she discovered something even worse. The young couple had been brutally murdered, each shot in the face at close range. Billy's throat had also been slashed. In a heart-wrenching detail that would make the headlines, the couple's seven-month-old son was found alive, covered in his mother's blood. <laughs> Imagine losing your life in this way. And imagine what Bill and Billie Jean's son went through afterward. It's easy to think a seven-month-old won't remember this, but babies understand more than they can express. And witnessing your parents get unalive is something that will forever be etched into a person's memory, no matter how young they were at the time. Okay, do you want to do CPR? That must be it. It's too late. The brutality of the crime sent shockwaves through the small town of Mountain City. This is the bedroom where Billy was found. Single shot. Single shot. Face. The police immediately launched an investigation, interviewing friends, family, and acquaintances of the victims. It wasn't long before the detectives learned about the famous feud between the Paynes and the Porters. Initially, the investigation seemed to hit a dead end. The Potter family denied any involvement, but you can hear Janelle's dad get defensive before the agents even revealed the whole extent of the crime. Now, Marvin Potter, aka Buddy, had served in Vietnam, and he claims in the CIA too before all the health problems kicked in. He was one of those God-fearing, gun-loving people who praised the Lord but swore to bring hell to anyone who would hurt his family. I know what you're thinking, nothing wrong with wanting to protect your family, but this guy seemed to choose violence. Punch in the face, ask questions later kind of guy. Also, the Potter house was filled with his guns. Paired with Janelle's overprotection, the detectives had a good reason to suspect him. But he denied everything in that first interview. Another big problem was there was no physical evidence linking them to the crime scene. It was a very clean scene as far as physical evidence goes. So no prints, no shell casings, no DNA left behind. Not that we found, no sure. Janelle revealed some details about the feud, but made it sound like she was only a victim in this and never wanted any harm to come to the couple. They did harass me in my driveway, on our property, and then yesterday morning when I got on Facebook is when I found out. And um, they were like, oh, well, this is a crime scene. And by the way, when the detective asked why they would harass her, she said it was because she was too pretty and Billie Jean was jealous of her. Someone has a PhD in manipulation. However, it wouldn't be long before a breakthrough came in the case, and that's when detectives interviewed Jamie Kerr, Janelle's secret boyfriend. Yep, she was still seeing Jamie. And under the pressure from investigators, Jamie revealed a bizarre and chilling story that would blow the case wide open. Take care of people messing with Janelle. People ain't gonna mess with my girl no more. She's not my girl. Is the CIA here? CIA? Jamie told the police about a mysterious CIA agent named Chris who had been communicating with him and Barbara Potter via email. According to Jamie, this Chris had been urging them to protect Janelle from Billy and Billie Jean. 
who he claimed were planning to harm her. The revelation about a supposed CIA agent's involvement left the investigators baffled and skeptical. Armed with this new information, the police obtained a search warrant for the Potter home. And what they found was astounding. In Marvin Buddy Potter's truck, they discovered bags of shredded documents. Painstakingly pieced back together, these documents revealed thousands of emails between Barbara Potter and the mysterious Chris. The emails painted a disturbing picture. Chris, claiming to be a CIA operative, had been feeding Barbara and Jamie a steady stream of lies about threats to Janelle's life. He insisted that Billy and Billie Jean were planning to SA and unalive Janelle, and that the only way to protect her was to eliminate the perceived threat. These messages were filled with hateful rhetoric and explicit encouragement to commit murder. As the investigation deepened, a shocking truth emerged. The IP address of the emails from Chris was traced back to the Potter family's computer. It became clear that there was no CIA agent named Chris. The entire persona had been fabricated by none other than Janelle Potter herself. Janelle, it turned out, had created an elaborate catfishing scheme. She had invented the character of Chris, basing him loosely on a former classmate she had a crush on in high school. Through this fictional persona, she manipulated her mother and her boyfriend, feeding their fears and paranoia until they were convinced that murder was the only solution. The level of manipulation was staggering. Janelle had effectively orchestrated a double homicide without ever picking up a weapon herself. She had played on her mother's protective instincts and her boyfriend's devotion, turning them into unwitting assassins in her vengeful plot. And the full extent of Janelle's deception came to light. The community was left reeling. How could someone create such an elaborate lie? And how could her parents and boyfriend fall for it? The aftermath of the investigation led to multiple arrests. Marvin, Buddy Potter, and Jamie Curd were charged with carrying out the actual murders. Barbara Potter was arrested for her role in planning and encouraging the killings. And Janelle, the mastermind behind it all, was charged with first-degree murder for orchestrating the entire scheme. The trials that followed were sensational, drawing national attention to the small Tennessee town. Janelle's defense team tried to argue that she was not intelligent enough to have planned such an elaborate scheme, painting her as a childlike figure with the mental age of an eight or nine-year-old. However, the evidence of her manipulation and the sophistication of her catfishing operation told a different story. In the end, justice was served, but at a terrible cost. Marvin Potter was sentenced to two life terms in prison. Barbara and Janelle Potter were sentenced to two life terms plus 25 years. Jamie Curd, in exchange for his testimony against the Potters, received a 25-year sentence. The tragic deaths of Billy Payne and Billy Jean Hayworth left their infant son an orphan, an innocent victim of a senseless act of violence born from an online feud. And just like that, the Potter family and Jamie Curd kissed their freedom goodbye. Janelle Potter's actions stemmed from a perfect storm of isolation, manipulation, and unchecked fantasy. Growing up sheltered and overprotected, she never developed the social skills or emotional maturity to navigate real-world relationships. This left her ill-equipped to handle rejection or jealousy, especially when it came to her crush on Billy Payne. Instead of facing reality, Janelle retreated into an online world where she could control the narrative. She created the character of Chris as a powerful ally, a projection of her own rage and neediness. This fictional CIA agent became her way of expressing the pain and resentment she couldn't deal with directly. Her parents' constant enabling and failure to hold her accountable only fueled her belief that she could manipulate reality to suit her desires. In the end, Janelle's warped understanding of social interactions, combined with her ability to lose herself in online fantasies, led her to orchestrate a real-world tragedy. The Janelle Potter case shows us how badly things end when online beef gets out of control. Let's learn from it and do better. Hey, thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts on this case in a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you soon.